Hello and welcome back to our cottage garden. This is going to be in place of our August garden tour, but I'm a little bit later than I tend to make these videos. I like to make them in the middle of the month and we just completely lost track of time this month. So this probably won't reach you until September, but we're filming in the last few days of August. Going to show you what the garden's looking like, a few things that are looking nice. And we've got some really exciting stuff to show you in the pond. So that's really good. Um, down here, everything's just looking quite lush and green, needs a bit of a tidy up, um, especially the mint. I think I'll cut this back soon. Um, the cosmos are looking quite nice. I just put these in here because there's not really anything interesting in this bed this time of year. Um, they need a little bit of a deadhead, but there's still some really pretty flowers on there. Um, and you can see the Erigeron's kind of establishing itself on the steps again. Um, not as good as last year, but we lost a lot of it in this really cold winter that we had. Um, so I'm trying to rebuild it slowly but surely and it's getting there, but I think it's gonna take another year until it looks really showy again. Um, this is one of our new Ligustrum standards um, and I will show you why we have these as we move up the garden. Been a nightmare, <laughs> but so good to, to get some things like this in and we'll be planting them soon. Um, but let's move up this way and I can show you the pond. So behind me is our newly fixed pond. And if you watched our garden tour in July, you will have seen the state of this before we had it fixed. It was appalling. Um, we basically had probably at least eight really big tears in the lining and we had some help fixing it because it was just beyond what we were capable of, I think. Um, so we had some really lovely people come and visit and they removed all the stones, pulled out the old lining and put in a really um, thick new lining that's got a lifetime guarantee. So hopefully it shouldn't rip again. Um, but you can see the water level has come up so much and this is a really lovely blank canvas now ready to get some plants in. Um, so if anyone knows about pond plants, do make some recommendations for us. We'd absolutely love to know what you think, but we definitely need some oxygenating pond weed or something in here just to make the water a bit more wildlife friendly. Oh my God, did you see the frog? <laughs> that just like jumped. Where did that go from? I never knew we had frogs in here. That's amazing. Uh, what was I talking about? Oxygenating pond weed to make it more wildlife friendly. Well, I guess it's wildlife friendly. <laughs> um, we never had frogs in here because we had such a big newt population. And we do still have newts in here because I saw one yesterday, but I have seen a few frogs now. Um, and there was one of them just then. So that's really cool. Not sure how it's going to work out as time goes on, um, whether the newts will eat all the frog spawn or whatever they do. but. Um, nice to know there's some life in here anyway and it will just get better. I would really like to add a water lily to the pond but um, it's got a deciduous tree over the top so it doesn't get a lot of light in the summer so I'm not sure if I can do that. Um, again if anyone knows about growing water lilies more than I do please share your advice um, but just super excited that we finally got this fixed. It's been years of this looking dreadful for a number of reasons. And finally, we can start to create a really, really lovely pond from this. So yeah, uh, super pleased. So the biggest thing I've been working on since I last showed you around is tackling box moth caterpillar. And as you can see, um, we've had not too bad of an attack on this tree um, hedge rather, but it has been eaten quite substantially. And you can see, especially low down, where the leaves have just um, turned brown and crumbled off. And there's some kind of skeletons of previous leaves that they would have um, worked their way through this quite quickly. And I did buy some biological control, which has really, really helped, but I don't want to have to deal with that constantly. So I reached the compromise of pulling out all of the kind of smaller box hedges. So anything, um, anything smaller than this, I pulled out and discarded because I just don't want to have to worry about it. And then the bigger ones, I'm going to try and keep alive for as long as I can. Um, but I've got these to replace the smaller hedges and um, just to get something in the ground so that it can get established over the years. So that if we do ever lose these, at least we've got something to fall back on. So these are Ligustrum lollipops or standards. Um, I love these so much and they're evergreen. So they'll give us a nice bit of structure um, over the winter. And I think I've got three of these, um, so I think I'm going to add them to the borders up there, um, try and tidy those up and give them like a little bit more kind of structure. Um, and then these two down here, these are Ilex cronata, which is a box-leaved holly. And if you don't know much about box hedges, and I class myself as someone who doesn't know an awful lot about them, they look 
almost identical. Um, so I think these are a really, really good swap. They won't struggle with blight like box hedges can, and they won't be eaten by the box moth caterpillar. So um, let me know if you've had any experiences with that anyway, but I was really stressed when I saw them on here because I've heard all kinds of horror stories about people going away for a holiday and then coming back and they've completely lost all of their amazing um, box hedges. But this is the biggest one we've got in the garden and to be honest, we don't have that many. I think we have about nine in total. I've pulled out about half of those, maybe a little bit more. Um, and I have also added some other, um, some Japanese holly um, to the borders as well. So we've added five so far, and then we've got five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Got ten, ten new hedges to go in. So although they don't look like much now, um, it will just be really good to get these in the ground and then we'll have something to fall back on as the years go on. But um, what a nightmare. I was absolutely gutted when I saw the caterpillars on here um, and even just trying to keep on top of it, it's a really big job. I wonder if there's more now. I can see that this kind of telltale sign is the webbing that you get on the leaves. I think I might have to put another application of biological control on this already. Um, but I can't see any caterpillars quite yet. Um, but you can see the hedge does want to recover. There's new bits of growth, so I just need to keep on top of it. Um, I'm also reseeding the lawn down here, so it looks a bit patchy and that's why I just wanted to do it before the growing season is over. I meant to do it in the spring and I just completely forgot. Um, but that is our situation with the box hedges. Now let's move up the garden and I'll show you our vegetable garden and tomatoes. I have been working on my raspberry canes. So um, these are summer fruiting raspberries. So I cut down all of the used growth and new shoots I've tied into these hoops. Um, I'll probably come out and tidy them up a little bit um, as they start to lose their leaves. But I, I love training them in hoops. It kind of looks quite messy if you don't do anything with it. And it's a nice way to have it look a bit tidier. And I also do this because I like planting bulbs in this bed under here. I grow hundreds of crocuses. Um, so. I like to keep it clear so I can kind of garden and get some bulbs in there. Um, and on the topic of bulbs, I've placed my order now for autumn bulbs. Um, so far I've ordered about 1,200. Um, my highest ever I think was 3,000. So I'm not sure how many I'm gonna plant this year, but remember to give us a subscribe if you'd like to see um, how we get on with the bulbs. Cause that is my favorite thing about gardening, um, spring flowering bulbs. So I will be sharing that with you soon and getting those in the ground. And I just can't wait, that's the best. Um, but let's go in the polytunnel and I can show you the tomatoes now. So here's a little look inside the polytunnel. And in our last video, we showed you picking the tomatoes and the aubergines. Um, so if you missed that, do give it a watch. Um, but we've still got so many tomatoes left to ripen and I've been really happy with them this year. We've managed to avoid blight so far, even though it has been ideal conditions for blight. Um, it might just be luck, but I have been stripping the leaves off these to make some good airflow between the plants. Um, they have been slow to ripen this year, but it's meant we've had kind of like a really long staggered harvest. So normally I'd harvest loads in one go and then make loads of pasta sauce, but we've been able to just have a few with dinner here and there as they ripen. Um, so that's been amazing. I just absolutely love tomatoes. I think they're the most, for me, they feel like one of the most rewarding vegetables to grow. And I started these on the dining room table back in January, February kind of time. So when you have them with your dinner, it just feels really lovely and you kind of appreciate all of that effort that went into growing them. Um, but I'd say tomatoes are probably the most successful thing in the tunnel this year. I didn't have any luck with melons. Um, I had some really good cucumbers, but the plants look a little bit rusty now. Um, I think they might've just had enough. They really don't look well. So I'll probably be taking the last few fruits off there and pulling those out, um, ready to sort of transition into my winter vegetables. Um, and you can see, if you look really closely, I've already got leeks dotted around in between plants. So once I, get rid of the tomatoes when they finish. There'll be some leeks down and I'll probably add some spinach, maybe some chard to overwinter and some garlic as well. Um, I'm tempted to get a bit of green manure in here this year as well, just to kind of give a bit of nourishment to the soil, but we will see. That will be what I'm working on next once the tomatoes are finally finished, but they look like they've still got a good few weeks on them. There's just so many uh, green ones and even still more flowers to go if we've got time. So we'll see, but super happy this year with the polytunnel. And, um, 
I've got this gorgeous dahlia as well. This is a dinner plate dahlia at the back. I showed you these earlier in the year and I left them in the ground, covered them with straw, and I think they just didn't rot because I didn't water them. Um, so that was a really good way of growing them without digging them out. I don't necessarily want them in here as a permanent feature, but out of sheer laziness, this is where they've stayed. Um, but they're lovely, the flowers get really big. Um, there's one there that you can kind of see. Um, and I'd say that's pretty much the polytunnel really. Um, so let's go and have a look at the vegetable garden next. My cut flower bed is looking a little bit sorry for itself at the moment. Um, the Nicotiana have done amazing and they're sort of going over now and finishing for the year. Um, but the other thing I was really excited to grow were these asters and they're absolutely beautiful. I love them, but I've lost so many plants um, because I had a badger come in and just rummage its nose through and kind of uproot loads of things. So at the back of the bed, I've lost most of them, um, but I've got a few at the front and I've been bringing them into the house and I just think they're amazing. I don't grow a lot of annuals, but I would definitely grow these again, um, perhaps sow them in autumn to give them a, a head start because these I sowed uh, later in, well, I sowed them earlier this year. Um, so they were a little bit late to flower, but they're beautiful. I just wish that a badger hadn't uprooted so many of them because <laughs> I wish I could make a really big um, vase full of them to bring them in, but still happy with what we've got. And I think that's just the nature of um, gardening in a wildlife friendly way. You do get um, things like that happen. The other thing I wanted to show you up here is these archways. And this is my Cabea scandens plant, which is the cup and saucer vine. Um, got one on each archway, but this is definitely the one that's taken off the most. And I just noticed the first flower on there and it's so pretty. This has been a plant that I sewed back on the dining room table in January. And on the packet, it said it could flower as early as July, as late as October. And I kept coming out here every video of these monthly tours and saying, oh, it could flower soon. Um, but it's taken until the very last day of August to actually flower. But it looks amazing. I really, really love it. And it's still putting on so much new growth. Um, and these are technically a perennial, but they're not hardy, so it won't survive the winter out here. But I have wondered about growing one in the greenhouse and seeing if I can uh, keep it over winter. If anyone's done that, let me know, because um, it's something I'd like to experiment with. But amazing coverage. And then on the other side, I've just got um, some climbing beans and I chuck these anywhere I've got a bit of space and just see where they end up. So um, they also have sweet little purple dainty flowers um, and given a bit of good coverage to this arch as well. I've also done a bit of maintenance on my perennial onion bed. Um, and if you remember when we put this in about a year ago, um, I filled it up layering different layers of organic matter. So logs at the bottom, straw, and then compost on top. And it was amazing for filling it up quickly, but over time the compost level dipped and sagged and was completely uneven. So I pulled all the onions at the top and then I've gone in and added, um, when I cleaned out the ducks, I added all of their mess and then topped it with a layer of compost um, and then put the um, tiny little onion plants in the top layer. Um, and they are taking off again now. So I'm hoping, I think I'll have to do the same again next year, but at least we're getting closer to this being full of um, good soil. It just takes a little bit of time to properly build it up. Um, and I've also ordered some perennial leeks to go somewhere in here. Um, I haven't figured out where yet though. Um, behind me, these are some elephant garlic that I let go to seed and they had the most beautiful flowers ever. And now they've got tiny little bulbules on the top and I'm gonna try planting these. They won't be ready to eat next year. It will be the year after, but I'm gonna try and get into kind of a rhythm of seed saving with these so that I don't need to um, replant the cloves each year. I can just rely on putting the bulbules in. Um, and have a constant supply of them around the garden because that's more in line with my kind of perennial long-term gardening approach rather than gardening in an annual sort of way. I will do cloves this year as well to give us more of a constant supply, um, but I'm really happy with everything up here. It feels like it's really starting to get established. I think when you grow perennial gardens, they feel really slow at first, but once we're a couple of years in, it starts to feel way more rewarding. Um, I've been struggling with badgers in my Jerusalem artichoke bed as well. So that's taking longer than I would like to get established, but it is getting there. And I think we'll have some flowers on those in the next few weeks too. Um, and our courgettes are doing well. I'm going to have a look to see if we've got anything to harvest on those. Looks like we do.
got a whopper of a courgette on here. <laughs> That's amazing. I think there's another one in there too. That one's a little bit more normal. So we're in the orchard now and I'm just going to grab a few figs because I've just noticed that they're ripe. Um, I have actually missed one. Looks like it might have been eaten by the flies, but I'll try and grab the rest. It's been a really good year for figs. Um, not sure why, but I won't question it. That one's been eaten. I think it's just three today. Let's get rid of that one. These are so tasty. Um, I'll show you the inside. They're like perfectly ripe, but absolutely love these. Don't film this. <laughs> it looks like our first batch of apples are ready now as well. Um, I will probably pick these next week because I don't have time at the moment. But I wanted to show you up here just for kind of a realistic representation of the garden and how it is just difficult to keep things tidy. We only cut this area back once a year, so we're going to have some help with that this year um, because it's quite a big space and I find it really hard to lift the petrol strimmers. So we're going to get some people in who will help us cut it back and rake it away and then I can start getting my bulbs in the ground for spring. Um, which I'm super excited to show you, but I do like to be realistic and show you when I feel like I kind of can't keep on top of things. And sometimes places do look overgrown and weedy and that's fine. And it's good for the wildlife too, but it will be getting its once yearly cut back um, in a couple of weeks time. But there you go, um, short and sweet today really. Um, I think just because I've been keeping on top of the kind of practical things like trying to get the box moth caterpillar under control and filling up the raised beds, there's not too much going on in terms of flowers and things that are super beautiful, but the practical stuff is essential. I hope you have enjoyed having a look around today and be sure to subscribe if you wanna see us getting those bulbs in the ground because I'm so excited about that. Um, but thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.